Say, Annie, did you hear that whistle? Sure did, Amos. That whistle means Rinso White, Rinso Bright, Rinso New. That's right, it means that this is Sunday and we is on the air for Rinso with Solium. <laughs> The Amos and Andy Show, with Lou Lubin, Ernestine Wade, Johnny Lee, Will Wright, Jeff Alexander's Music, Vince Townsend, and radio's all-time favorites, Amos and Andy. <laughs> yes, sir, the Amos and Andy Show, brought to you by Lieber Brothers Company, makers of Rinso, the only soap that contains solium. That's why Rinso gets your clothes whiter and brighter than new. Rinso white, rinso bright, rinso new. Happy little wash day song. Last week, through a misunderstanding, the kingfish thought he was being drafted. Trying to better his position in the armed forces, the kingfish enlisted for a four year hitch in the field artillery, only to find out his draft notice was a mistake. And right now, he's telling his troubles to his friend Andy. I like that, and I joined the field artillery to keep from being drafted, and then to tell me this whole draft thing was a mistake. Yeah, that was a nasty turn of events there. Yeah, talk about having something boomerang on you. Now I know how no face Jackson felt when he said the shotgun wasn't loaded. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something, that field artillery is pretty rugged stuff. Oh, it ain't no Boy Scout Jamboree, I'll tell you that, boy. You know... The chances is they'll assign you to a trench mortar or have you firing one of them 75-millimeter Willitzers, you know it? Yeah. Well, I kind of read up on the thing last night that uh, seeing that on every cannon there's four men. Uh, one fella aims the thing, another fella puts the shell in it, another fella closes the breech, and the fourth fella shoots it off by pulling the string. I'm going to try to get in the string section, that's what I think. <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell you, this is the worst mess I've ever been in, and... Uh, Oh, wait a minute, uh, Hello, George Kingsley Stevens speaking. Hello, this is Donovan over at the Time Citizen. No. Yeah. I wonder if we could send a reporter over to see you. Reporter? And a photographer. I'd like to run an article on you joining the 101st Field Artillery. You know, older man sees duty, enlists. It's a fine thing you're doing, Mr. Stevens. Well, thank you, sir, but uh, oh, I don't think you have to put it in the paper. After all, uh, my picture, too, huh? <laughs> yes. Picture and a two column spread. Oh, well, I don't think that, uh, uh, what page? We plan the front page. Oh, well, I'll drop around the office sometime, give you the whole story. That's fine. When can we expect you? Well, I guess there's no hurry, but at any time, say within the next three, four minutes, be all right. <laughs> I'll be expecting you. Just ask for Mr. Donovan. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Donovan. I'm leaving now. Wait there for me. Yeah, hey, like that, Anna. They're going to put my picture in the newspaper. The man said that uh, he's going to write up a story, give me a two-column, uh, two-way spread there and everything else, you see? Yeah. Oh, just going in the army, that might not be a bad thing ever, all me joining up there like that. Yeah, and on top of that, the brothers was going to give you a testimonial dinner and a gold watch. Of course, it was the same watch they was going to give Brother Thompson, only he didn't get the reprieve. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, uh... Long as they don't give me the same dinner, you know, that don't keep as good as the watch do. <laughs> you know, and I'm just thinking here, if I do get in the army, I might even turn out to be a hero, and you know that? Oh, sure, you could be a hero, all right. Might even come back with a Croydon gear or the oatmeal cluster. You, can. <laughs> you know, I can see myself in action right now, and the howling mad Stevens. You can, huh? Oh, yeah. Me and my buddies is up there at the front line with the shells screaming and the bazooka zooking. <laughs> pulling away on the string there. All of a sudden, we gets word that the enemy is done infiltrated in our ranks and two spittoons is moving up from the rear. <laughs> now, there he is right there in the front line. Now, what does I do? You ask him for a longer string. <laughs> oh, no, and uh, I whipped out my flamethrower. I infiltrate right back at him. By the time all the infiltrating is over, I captured prisoners in one hand. Oh, I tell you, and in the other hand, I got there, uh... Call you back. We're in the middle of a battle here. <laughs> well, I charge it on the ridge, yelling to my buddies to come on. Uh, to co uh... Hey, wait a minute. You better answer that phone, Kingfish. Uh, yeah, I remember where I was now. And on top of ridge there. I finished okay. this battle. Uh, hello? Uh, George Kingfish Stevens speaking. Who? Oh, oh, Lieutenant Parker. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, right away, sir. Aye, aye, sir. 
Oh. Emma, that was the field artillery headquarters. Yeah. Yeah, they, they want me to come down there right away. It's the call to duty. And the next time you see me, I'll be singing that great song of the field artillery. When the croutons go rolling along. <laughs> Well, uh, Lieutenant Parker, I is here and ready for action. Yes, yes. Well, uh, <clears throat> as you know, the 101st in trains for Fort Bragg, North Carolina, Monday morning. Mm, uh, in trains? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. I, I know they're going to leave, and I want to report to you that I is ready to go with them, yes, sir. <laughs> well, that's fine. But um, I've been going over your enlistment papers with Captain Wilson, and I'm uh, well, I'm afraid you're past the age limit. Uh, now, wait a minute, uh... Don't let my bald head bother you. know, I can always wear a toupee when I'm fighting, if that's what you want me to do. Well, uh, Stevens, it's not just your age. It's your physical condition. No. Frankly, I don't think you could stand a good day's march. March? Well, you still got Jeep sent you. I don't get car sick. Let's ride around the place. Then. No, I'm very sorry, but we couldn't possibly accept you. Now, wait a minute. Now, but Lieutenant, uh, uh, but Captain, uh, uh, General, uh, you got to take me. I done uh, told everybody. I was going to go and, well, it's going to be in the newspaper and everything else. How could I explain it to my wife? She is home now, thinking that I'm down here getting in this your army. Well, Stevens, your desire to get in the army is admirable, but um, it's impossible. Uh, well, all right, but if one of these days the Russians come marching up Broadway, don't come around my house blowing the bugle now. <laughs> Clara, I just had to call you about George. You know, he's down there now to get his orders for the Army. Yes, Clara, it's wonderful. Mm-hmm. I'm so proud of George. You know, I see him in a whole different light now. I sure do. Yes, for the first time in his life, he's done something I can be proud of. Clara, I hear him coming in now. I'll have to hang up. Goodbye. Here's your home, Tuffer. Is that you, my soldier? <laughs> That's me. Oh, George, I've just been on the phone telling everybody about you going in the Army. George, we all so proud of you. Mama's proud of you. My sister's proud of you. Yeah, well, I appreciate this, all them being trotted up like that. Uh, <laughs> but there's uh, something that I won't tell you, Safa. So George, you going in the Army makes up for everything you've done in the past. Now I got a husband and I can be proud of. George, I'm going to miss you. But I know that you'll be somewhere doing your duty. Oh, George, you don't know what this has meant to me. You joining the army and being so noble and brave has made me the happiest woman in the whole world. You see, I'm going in the other room, George. Oh, well, I suppose MacArthur's wife carries on the same way. I don't know. You don't have to phone me every day. I know the 101st has left for camp, but George says he'll be delayed till his orders come through. Mama, George is not trying to get out of it. Well, I know a week has gone by. He says he's on standby orders. Yes, I'll call you just as soon as we hear. No, Brother Crawford, George has not deserted. He expects his orders from the army any moment. <laughs> He's leaving any day now. <laughs> Who is that on the phone, Sapphire? Oh, well, nobody, George. Oh, um, well, by the way, George, uh, yeah. I don't know what made me think of this, but um, have your army orders come through yet? Uh, army orders? No, no. Uh, you know, I uh, told you, honey, I got standby orders, uh, and I stand by. Uh, <laughs> They told me to stand around till I hear from them. I'm standing. 
See, there's kind of a shortage of uniforms in the field artillery. What too? Uh, a shortage of uniforms? Yeah, you wouldn't want me up there in the front line loading a gun in my BVDs, would you? <laughs> Let's see if this thing uh, cold over there. Well, now, George, look, I don't want to mention it. I didn't like to do it at all, but it's just that a few of our friends is asking questions. And after all, they didn't give you three farewell dinners or gold watch, and then they hung that big flag outside the lodge hall with a star on it. Yeah, well, honey, I know that, and I'll see if I can speed things up. Uh, I'm standing by as fast as I can. That's all I can do. <laughs> well, I'll try to speed things up. That's what I'll do. All right. I know you will, darling, because this time I have all the faith in the world in you. I'm going out now, George. Goodbye, honey. Yeah, she's talking about that solid gold watch the brothers give me. Pawnbroker wouldn't give me but a dollar and a quarter for the thing. I... <laughs> What is I going to do? If I tell my friends I was turned down by the army, they'll never believe me. But I got to face this here thing sooner or later. Then on the other hand... Oh, Shorty the Barber, come in. Well, I'll be doggone the free... I was there... Yeah, hi, Kingfish. I, I was walking down the hall and I heard you talking to yourself in here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I guess I was, Shorty. Yeah, yeah. That's a bad thing, Kingfish. I, I, I used to talk to myself, but I cut it out. <laughs> Well, tell me this. Uh, why did you stop talking to yourself, Shorty? Well, a psychiatrist tell me that uh, I, I read some place where uh, the doctor say uh, they told me the thing was I, 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 I couldn't understand myself. <laughs> now look here, Shorty. Uh, you was an old friend of mine, and I know I can count on you not to dream of confidence. Mm. I tell you why I've been mumbling to myself here, confidential. Put your ear up here. Mm. Shorty. Mm. I ain't going in the army. You ain't? Now, Shorty, look here. Before we jump into any conclusions here, I want you to understand that this ain't no fault of my own. Oh, of course not, Ken. You, you, you can't help but you're a coward. <laughs> oh, no, Shorty. Wait a minute, sir, now. No, I ain't no... They, they turned me down on account of my age and my physical condition. Mm. The terrible thing is... My outfit done went to camp and everybody waiting for me to go. Now I'll never be able to face my wife and friends. Yeah, wait, wait, wait a minute, King Fred. If, if, if your friends saw the, saw the army turning you down, he hit you hard and, and broke your heart, they'd feel sorry for you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, get their sympathy. Yeah. Yeah, if my wife and friends felt sorry for me, they might forgive me. Yeah. <laughs> and there's my best friend. And my stupidest. <laughs> You know, Shorty, I think I'll try the sympathy angle on Andy first. Mm. If it works on him, I know I'm safe, because then it'll work on all my friends. Yeah, oh, yeah, that, that, that sympathy stuff I can really get results, Kingfish. Yeah. yeah, I know, because my mother pulled it on my father once. He, he, he'd never bring home his paycheck, so, so one night she decided to really play on his sympathy. She did, huh? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. She, she, she dressed us kids in rags and threw our shoes away and turned off the heat and the water and then... She met my father at the front door with a shawl around her head. He, he took one look around the place, and then my father went out and did the only thing a red-blooded man could do. What was that, Shorty? Oh, he went to the bank, drew out all the money. Uh, he went to the store and bought a lot of clubs. He, he went right out, and he... he, that, uh, he uh, 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 moved to a hotel. <laughs> Well, uh, just see the end of coming across the street there. I got all this stuff here. I'll see how this sympathy thing gonna work on Andy. Oh, come in, Andy, warm-hearted, sympathetic brother. Say, Kingfish, what is you doing with that gun and that knife on your desk? Andy, I have just received a blow from which I cannot recover. I was about to resort to self-destruction. Oh, well, I'll come back later. I didn't know I was buttoning in on something reporting like that. Come <laughs> back here, you fool. I'm gonna kill myself. Don't you know what I'm talking about? Oh, oh, yeah. Always something, man. <laughs> now, listen, Andy. I don't think you get the impact of what I'm packing here, boy. Now, look here. You see, Andy, the army is done turned me down. Oh, you done wormed out of the thing, huh? No, no, Andy. The thing is crushed, my boy. I crushed. The happy, carefree kingfish is no more. I was a broken down man. You don't look no more broke down to me than usual. <laughs> well, it's the inside where the damage is, Andy. Uh -huh. All my pride is gone. 
My gallbladder's deflated like a punctured football. <laughs> I know that half die is gone and you and all my other friends is going to blubber their fat heads off. I know you're going to be sorry. Listen, Kingfish, is you on the level about this thing? Certainly not on the level, Andy. And this ain't my first attempt at doing away with myself. Tell you, huh? I've been trying all day. Early this morning, I went out in the garage and started to take carbon monoxide. No fooling. Yeah, I put my mouth over that exhaust pipe. The stuff give me the headache. Kind of like... <laughs> Between choking on that hot pipe and taking aspirin, I couldn't get no place out there. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, there must be there must be more comfortable ways of knocking yourself off than that. Yeah. Another thing I was thinking, I was going over to Lennox Avenue and throwing myself under a crosstown bus. Only thing is, I don't know the schedule, you see. There. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a problem, all right. Of course, you know, you could go over and lay down on the railroad track and take potluck, something bound to come along there something. Uh, fine bunch of sympathy I get from you. Man, did never anyone ever tell you that you got a heart like a peach pit? Wait, what's the matter with you? I'm only trying to be helpful here. Now, wait a minute, man. Look here. I'm going I, I, I to tell you the truth. I was kind of using you as a guinea pig here, boy. I wanted to see how my friends would act when they found out that I wasn't going in the Army. Listen, Kingfish, you has got to go in the Army. All your friends are expecting it, and what's more important, your wife is counting on it. Yeah, I know, Andy. What I going to do? Everybody's sitting around waiting for me to leave for camp. Now, look, wait. Say, wait a minute. What? I could leave for camp, but I wouldn't have to get there. What do you mean, King Fish? Well, there's an old room upstairs in the attic here at the lodge hall. I could say goodbye to everybody at the station down there, and then sneak back here to the lodge hall, hide up in that room up there for a month, then tell everybody I was honorable discharge. Yeah. Either that, or tell them they retired you and put you in the preserves. <laughs> Come on, let's go upstairs and get that room in the attic cleaned out so I can move up there. That's what I want. Okay, Andy, I'll unlock the door. Hi, right, Kingfish, here. I done bring you your lunch. Well, thanks, Andy. Boy, this is working great. I've been up here a week now. Everybody seed me off down to the railroad station with the artillery base of Fort Bragg, and ain't they ain't none the wise. Yeah. Say, by the way, uh, I run into Sapphire today, Kingfish. She say this weekend she's going down to visit you at Fort Bragg. Yeah, well, that sure was nice of her to go down there because, uh, wait a minute. I ain't at Fort Bragg. I is here. <laughs> Holy smoke, that's right, ain't it? You is here. Kingfish, what you gonna do? And you better go down and get me a bus schedule. I'm gonna have to jump in one in front of them things anytime. Come on, hurry up, Calhoun. Hurry up, right up the steps here. Well, say, why is we climbing way up here? The kingfish is up here and he's in trouble. Well, why don't he have his trouble on the ground floor like you always do? <laughs> well, here he is, here he is. <laughs> Calhoun, thank goodness you was here. Relax, kingfish. Calhoun is here and he brung his brain with him. Yeah, yeah tell him the problem, kingfish. Well, Calhoun, tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, my wife is leaving for the field artillery bears at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Don't worry, Kingfish. They'll never take her. <laughs> oh, no, Calhoun. My wife thinks that I is in the 101st field artillery. Now, when she get down to Fort Bragg, she'll find out I've been lying. Well, Kingfish, you has got yourself in this mess through lies and falsehoods. And when you has brought yourself to this desperate position to prevail, Keaton, and lying, there's only one thing that'll save you. Uh, what is that? Bigger and better lies. <laughs> yeah, Calhoun, but this time it looked like the kingfisher's trap. Well, the thing to do, yeah, is beat her to the punch. Uh-huh. I tell you, get a hold of a soldier's uniform, and before she can leave for North Carolina, bust in on her and tell her you was home on follow. Yeah, I could do that for a couple of weekends. Then when the things quiet down a little bit, I tell her that I got a discharge from the army, and that'll wind up the whole mess. Yeah, you right. Huh. Well, I got to get going, boys. Yep. I sure has had a busy morning. Sure enough. Yeah, there was a big fight down at the bar last show, and I've been backstage all morning interviewing the chorus girls. I must have talked to 30 of them girls. Yeah, did you find out anything about the case? Doggone, I know that I forgot something. <laughs> How does 
us out looking to uniform. This is the stuff I picked up over at the pawn shop. Yeah, well, stand back and let me see, Kingfish. Yeah, what do you think of me and Olive Drab? Kingfish, you is the drabbest looking Olive I don't ever see. <laughs> well, Henry, I just had to take what I could get. I got paratroopers' boots and the steel helmet, yeah? That jacket ain't bad, neither. Oh, yeah, this is an Eisenhower jacket, in. Hmm. Guess they ain't paying him much over at Columbia if he's got a hockey's clothes. <laughs> oh, don't be stupid, and Now, look here, tell me, the, how do these medals I got pinned on here look at look you? Oh, boy, not bad. Let me see here. Bronze star, soldier's medal, good conduct, expert marksmanship, and first prize, county fair, Aberdeen Angus. <laughs> How are you going to explain that one to Sapphire Kingfish? Yeah, well, I ain't going to let her get a good look at him. I'm just going to stand in the middle of the room, kind of jangle them out of you, see? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, then, hand me my duffel bag, and let's march on up Lennox Avenue to my apartment. Yeah, okay, Kingfish. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, Kingfish. I just noticed in them pants you got there. They is pretty awful looking. Well, then, it is what they call in the Army fatigue trousers. Yeah. But when you get up to your apartment, be careful how you stand, for somebody done fatigued the seat out of them pants. <laughs> Yes, Amos, I just left the kingfish. He's up there now telling Sapphire the whole story. And you mean, Andy, that uh, he never went in the army at all? That's right. You see, he's going to tell Sapphire he's on a furlough. Then they're going to hide out in the attic for a couple more weeks and then finally tell her he's discharged. Yeah, well, that don't sound like the right thing to do to me. I think the kingfish going to get himself in a mess of trouble doing things like that, Andy. Oh, no, he ain't going to get in no trouble. Sapphire ain't got no way of finding out what's going on. Yeah, well, for his sake, I hope this here thing runs smooth. I know that. Yeah, me too. Because if Sapphire do find out he's lying to her, it's going to seem like the 38th parallel run right through her living room. Oh, George, it's so wonderful. You getting a furlough like this just when I was coming down to see you. Oh, yes, honey, yes, yes. Too bad that you couldn't get down to dear old Fort Bragg. Great players down there. <laughs> I wanted to see what a big shot I is down there, yeah. Uh, look at here. How you like these medals I done won? Uh, that's what they call lettuce. Look at there. Look at the lettuce I got Ooh. there. Well, yeah. George, you sure he's got a lot of them there. Oh, yeah. I done qualified for all these. Qualified. Look at here. The only thing I ain't qualified for is the purple horn. Look at I got everything here. Uh-huh. But you know, George, your uniform looked kind of sloppy. It's all torn and ripped there. Yeah, well, now, honey, I'll explain that to you. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the general done furloughed me right in the middle of, the middle of bayonet practice there, you see? And so I just grabbed my steel helmet and come right on up here. I was so anxious to see you, my loved one. Ah. Listen, George, do you think that your outfit, the 101st, is going to be stationed here long? Oh, yes, honey, yeah. The general was telling me just yesterday that uh, they'll be at Fort Bragg for at least six more months. Uh, you see, some of the boys uh, ain't got the hang of firing them cannons down there yet, uh, only yesterday, they lobbed the shell right into the mess hall. Boom, it went over right into the mess hall there. Oh, mess hall. Yeah, well, nobody was hurt, though. The only thing is, they'll be eating mashed potatoes and scrambled eggs for a couple of weeks. <laughs> this morning, I found a little glass in my bean soup, but everything is going fine. Oh, George, I'm really so proud of you. This is one time you really come through. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got a great outfit, the 101st. Most of the officers are Annapolis men, too, you know, yeah. I'll get it, George. Yeah, I'll shine the medals while you're doing that. I'll shine the medals, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Stevens. This is Donovan over at the Time Citizen. Oh, yes. How are you? I wonder if we could get a statement from you. How it feels to be the wife of a service man overseas. What'd you say? Well, your husband's outfit, the 101st, was shipped out last Thursday. Uh, hurry up, honey. I want to tell you more about my life at Fort Bragg. <laughs> you mean to say they're all gone? Yes. All leaves were canceled and the sale last Thursday. I see. I'm beginning to see a lot of things. Hey, make it snappy, honey, and shine up the metal here with the oatmeal clusters and all this stuff waiting to show you here. Hurry up there, honey. I'll have to call you later. Oh, Georgie. Mm. What is it, honey? <laughs> Don't you think you ought to take off your heavy steel hat now? Oh, uh, yeah, not a bad idea. There we is. Uh, honey, honey, put down that vase. Oh, my head. Now you can buy for the purple heart. Oh, <laughs> Nice 
right, folks. See you next Sunday. Be sure to be with us next Sunday at the same time. The Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Rinsol with Sodium, will again present the Ames and Andy Show, which is written by Joe Connolly, Bob Mosher, and Bob Ross. Stay tuned for the Edgar Berg and Charlie McCarthy program, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Yeah.